Coach, just uh, obviously Kansas State a little bit younger than they were in the last couple of years. I guess what have you seen from them in terms of their development with some of their freshmen, including that seven-footer that stepped up in that last TCU game? Yeah, Bradford's coming off a big game, uh, Carlos. You know, just letting our guys know, even though they play, you know, uh, three freshmen start uh, for them for most of the year. You know, those guys aren't freshmen anymore. You know, those guys have got a lot of valuable experience. They're, they're getting coached by, you know, who we feel is one of the best coaches in college basketball. Uh, and Coach Weber got a ton of respect for his team. But obviously, they'll come in here and play really hard. And, you know, obviously, we, we, we've uh, showed our guys, you know, their performance at Iowa State, which we all know is a very hard place to play. Uh, and those guys came in as a confident bunch. And, you know, they've had some adversity this year, but they've really responded well. How have you seen that team respond, especially with only three upperclassmen, the two juniors and the one senior, McCurl? Yeah, say it again. Repeat the question. Uh, just how have you kind of seen that team with uh, several freshmen and just three upperclassmen kind of respond? Yeah, you know, you know, they had, they had a tough loss last game. But, again, we talked about them playing at Iowa State uh, just recently, you know, and just – you know, went up there and played very confident and got a tough road win. Uh, the Big 12 is it's a tough league. You know, we think is arguably the best league in college basketball. And, and on any given night, anybody can be beaten. So uh, those guys will be prepared. They've got a great coaching staff. Um, and and we'll, we'll have to play really well uh, and play Texas Tech basketball on both sides of the floor to, to make sure we come out with the win. When he was asked uh, post game the last one where you got that a tough loss to Oklahoma State in a one to two possession game. Coach Beard had mentioned that he didn't like the word uh, re a rebound in terms of trying to rebound from a loss. I guess what, what does he kind of describe to the coaches and the players as to what this game will be for you all in terms of just kind of getting ready for another Big 12 game? Well, Carlos, you, you know, you know, you've been around for a while. You know, Coach Beard talks every day about the process and just, you know, us just continuing to execute that every day. And so we'll just keep grinding, keep sawing wood, so to speak. Um, and just stick into the process, man. Um, this is the, you know, the biggest game on our schedule because it's the next game, and uh, we're approaching it that way. Who are some players that you've kind of seen step up in your, in your time here? I know sometimes Coach Beard has certain coaches kind of work with some guys. I guess who are some guys you've worked with and kind of seen their development uh, so far this regular season? You know, I, I think we've all been proud of. Um, you know, our return is development. You know, we, we got to get our guys and we got to help them. We got to coach better. And we got to get our guys playing a little more consistent. Uh, but, you know, Kyler's, you know, in shape. I mean, he's in the best shape of his career. Um, you know, we, we think he's still, you know, arguably one of the best guards in the Big 12. TJ Shannon and had a huge offseason and really improved his shooting. Um, and then, you know, I, I, you know, we all think that Kevin McCullough, you know, it's great to have him back out there on the floor. We think that he's one of the best, just pure basketball players. He plays the right way um, in the Big 12. And so, um, and then, you know, Tariq coming off a red shirt year, you know, he, he gets in the game. He does some, some really good things for us, uh, especially on the defensive side, um, just with his energy and, um, and his effort, you know, and so, and then, you know, Avery is the rock of our team. We, we know how special Avery Benson is for us. So, um, and then I think all of these new guys are, you know, they're fitting into their roles. Uh, we're still, you know, working on being a cohesive team um, and just, you know, just being, you know, uh, re really, really intentional about playing, um, you know, Mark Adams' side defense and then, you know, really, really getting better at, at our motion offense. Last one for me, I know Coach Beard talked a little bit about it. It's the first time I've had a chance to talk with some of the assistants. I guess, how has this kind of crazy pandemic season kind of affected you, or has it really not affected you in terms of some of the things you've had to do or not do during game days or throughout the throughout off season? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a different different type year, but you know we haven't you know used that as an excuse or, at, 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 you know at, at any time. You know, for us, you know, we continue to tell our guys how blessed we are. Uh, that we have an opportunity to play. There's some teams around college basketball that don't have this opportunity to play at all. Uh, so, you know, just thankful for these opportunities to practice and to play and, you know, the game that we all love to, to play and coach. Um, and so just, you know, I, I think it's all about your perspective, Carlos. So I think that's, you know, Coach Beard does a great job of, of leading us in that, in that area. That's good, Eric. Thanks, Coach. Coach, uh, 
Kansas State with three guys who average at least double figures in scoring, what challenge does that pose in a team that can kind of rely on multiple different guys on the offensive end? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, McGrill is, is a guy that has really improved a lot. And, you know, um, you know, we talked about Bradford earlier. Uh, he, he's a big kid that, you know, is very, very good uh, on the low block. He's got soft hands. Um, Gordon is a guy we have a ton of respect for. We, we thought last year he was one of the, the better freshmen uh, in the Big 12, and he's improved his game. And then, you know, we talk about those freshmen. You know, uh, Pac is, is a guy that, you know, we had a, a lot of respect for just watching him play on the EYBL circuit and those things. So uh, the freshmen are really maturing, as we talked about earlier. Um, we'll have to do a great job guarding the three-point line. Could have multiple guys in their start lineup and guys that have come off the bench that are, you know, shoot the three. Uh, and then obviously all of Coach Weber's teams, man, are going to be very disciplined offensively and they'll run a lot of, you know, a lot of actions. So we got to really be dialed into personnel and make sure we do a great job of executing scout report. You've already had a couple tight games, especially in, in conference play and can assume there will be many more throughout the Big 12. For you guys, what's the key – to finishing off as many of those games as possible with a win. Yeah, I, you know, it's, I think it's just the night in the Big Twelve. You know, you, you look at these scores every year. You know, you know, every 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 game are, are tough. You know, um, <laughs> knockout. You know, eighteen round fights. So um, for us, man, it's it's just we we need to you know, continue to be down the stretch, be a little more disciplined. Um, and we got to coach better, and, you know, and we have to have some guys, you know, uh, step up. And I, I'm confident that we will, you know, in those moments to really be able to, you know, it's one, you know, defensive rebound or, you know, uh, limit our turnovers late, or really get, you know, a great possession offensively late. It's all those little things that add up. And, you know, we'll, we'll continue to keep working at it. And, you know, it's just it's the night in the Big 12. Coach talked about Oklahoma State, the night, you know, before our game. You know, he, he said they were two possessions away from being maybe a top 10 team in the country. And, you know, he was true. You know, I mean, it was true. So, you know, every, every game is, you know, it's going to be, you know, come right down to the wire. And uh, we embrace those moments. And I think we, we have a team of guys that, that do as well. And so we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, Coach, um, <clears throat> early in the year, um, K-State lost to Fort Hayes State by seven points uh, in a loss that a lot of people saw as kind of a disastrous type of a loss for K-State. Uh, and I was just wondering if you have ever been a part of a loss like that where you were just a prohibitive favorite, but somehow you still felt. Uh, and if so, what sort of an impact, if any, uh, does that sort of a loss have on a team? You know, it's a good question. I, I can't re really remember a loss like that. Um, you know, that comes to the top of my head. I'm, just, I'm sure I've, you know, I've been coaching a long time. You know, 14, 15 years now. So I'm sure I, I may have experienced uh, one similar. But I, I, I think, you know, you know, kudos to to, to Kansas State because I think they've really bounced back well, as we talked about earlier. You know, it, it, and you know, in a lot of ways, man, it's kind of made them more cohesive. Um, and they've responded well, and those guys have grown up, uh, you know, from that. So we, we'll have a tough, tough battle on our hands tomorrow night. All right, we'll finish up with Ronald. One more question. Uh, you talked about this team, you know, still basically learning how to play with each other and become a cohesive unit. But what do you feel like they are in that progression right now, and is that somewhere, you know, where you guys imagine them to be at at this stage of the season, or – are they a little bit more advanced or even, you know, behind? You know, we, we talk all the, all the time about playing March basketball. Uh, for us, you know, that's, you know, three to five pass possessions where we get the ball popping, getting the ball side to side and playing inside and out, I mean, inside out, either with the pass or the drive. And so um, we're, we're working really hard, Ron, in terms of just eliminating um, empty possessions, you know, wasted possessions, talk a lot of, about turnovers um, and so I, I, I think that you know at the end of the day you know we want to peak at the right time you know um, and you know continue to to keep getting better and you know being intentional about those things like I saw, talked about earlier on, on both sides of the floor